I'm Ben Gertzel. I'm a AGI researcher and mathematician. I'm the CEO of SingularityNet, the ASI Alliance, True AGI, and a bunch of other organizations. And I'm psyched to be here talking to my friend uh, Gary about what's going on with the path to AGI. I'm Gary Marcus. I'm a cognitive scientist and AI researcher. I founded Geometric Intelligence, which I sold to Uber. I've written six books, most recently, Taming Silicon Valley. And I'm often uh, described as an AI skeptic, but I want AI to succeed, despite what people may say about me. Um, and I'm as interested as Ed Ben is in how we might actually get there. We're gonna talk about AI ethics and governance and who should be controlling AI as it advances, potentially toward AGI and even, even beyond. We're also going to talk about reasoning and thinking and, you know, what will it take to make AIs actually reason as, as opposed to just, just faking it. I have a phrase I like, which is that AI, current AI, is morally and technically inadequate. You could imagine an AI that would be much more technically solid than what we have, and you could imagine a regime, I think, where the people who were running it were doing it more for the benefit well, I think you've you've inspired a title I'll use for a future album in my uh, band Desdemona's Dream, morally and technically inadequate. I think. I mean, you know, I want a kind of the royalties, but yeah, 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 kind of yeah, yeah. at it. I mean, but I, I think that that certainly describes the human condition very well, as as as, as well as. AI. And I mean, one of the reasons yeah. I've always been interested in AGI is because I do think humans are technically yeah, yeah. inadequate. I wrote a book, which you may or may not have read, called Kluge, you know, engineer solution. Uh, to you know, with duct tape and rubber bands. And the point is the human mind is a clue. I do think we could do better. We can do way better. Well, well that's right. And I, I've said that regarding ethics as well. I mean, Absolutely. we should be able to make AI systems that are both more generally intelligent than we are and more consistently, coherently, compassionate and ethical than we are. I mean, the bar isn't that high. In, in, in a way. It, it should be totally yeah. doable. I think the fact of the matter is we have not met that, that current AI is not reliable. You can't give it simple constraints to follow, like don't tell people how to make biological weapons and expect that it will actually follow it. But surely we ought to be able to do that kind of thing. Yeah, what I, what I find frustrating with the debate and discussion about large language models and associated chat systems and so on is that on the one hand, People go way overboard and say, well, these these are already AGIs because, I mean, GPT 4.5 passed the Turing test in, in, in some senses, and they're smarter than people, and they are in a way. I mean, so is an Excel macro or a pocket calculator smarter yeah, than I people. Mean, in, intelligence in is multidimensional. They're but smarter on some dimension. On the other hand, I also don't think these are sort of silly parlor tricks. Like, I, I think they're really, really interesting and useful systems. And they do have some profound and surprising emergent behaviors within them. But but yet, I still don't think they're the direct path to AGI. Like I do think there's something to be learned from them for AGI and some use of them within AGI systems. But like you can't, I think we agree on a lot here, although not everything. And Most I mean, of that. I, I mean, we agree you, you cannot take an LLM like bolts and other stuff onto it, scale it up bigger, and get a human level AGI. Like you're, there's- that Hasn't worked so far, that's for sure. Well, the fact that it hasn't worked so far, to me is not a good argument because they have gotten no, I think, smarter I think and there smarter, are other right? arguments too. Yeah. I would start with the fact that they don't, even in principle, really represent world models in the sense of here are some persistent entities in the world. This is their properties. This is what I expect of them. They just don't do yeah. that. They're opaque, so that makes them difficult to debug. They don't really reason well outside of distribution. You know, fundamentally, they're mimics, and they're better than just the simple memorizing system, but they kind of do like a little bit of analogy. They don't really have deep comprehension of what they're talking about, and their reasoning is always limited for that reason to things that are in some sense, and it gets complicated these days, some sense similar to the things they've seen before. And if things are different in important ways, they often miss that. Yeah, it is quite subtle, but when you use the systems a lot, you can see very clearly the phenomena that you're seeing. So, I, I mean, I use- There's some examples that aren't even that subtle. So for example, large language models 
nowadays are trained on an enormous amount of data, and that includes the game of chess, right? They're trained on millions of games of chess because they're in public domain. They're trained on the rules of chess. They're trained on books that are about how to play chess, and they still make illegal moves. That's not subtle. That is a failure um, to adopt an explicit set of rules, to, to be constrained yeah. by them. It's yeah. not really that subtle. And it turns out that maybe more subtle part is the further you go from standard games, the more they break, the more quickly they break. Yeah. That's the subtle and so important. What, what I've found, like I, I use reasoning LLMs quite a lot as research assistants. So I use them for mathematics and I use them for programming. And in math, I've found as long as you're within a recognized field of math that there's a big literature on, they do quite well, I would say as well as a mediocre math PhD student, which is pretty good, it's right? Not, I mean, not nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I Better mean, than I would do. I mean, so you can do category theory, you can do topology, and you can, you can do type theory, you can certainly do all sorts of calculus information, geometry, it's really quite good. Every now and then, like, less than 1% of the time, there's some weird mistake, but they're, so you have to check, but they're very, very good for programming. Also, I mean, you'll write code, but it makes a mistake, but then modern LLM programming environments will catch and fix a lot of those mistakes. But what I did find is, if you're in a branch of math where there's not a lot of publications, like let's say paraconsistent logic, which is being able to reason where a statement can be both true and false or something, right? Like that's a real branch of math. There's dozens of papers in it. There's not thousands of papers in it. LLMs become just super dumb mm -hmm. and no amount of Q-shot learning helps. And with programming, we've made our own AGI programming language called uh, Meta, M-E-T-T-A for Meta Type Talk, right? And I've not yet gotten LLMs through the program in that language, which is annoying because I, I would like to have a, a I, programming I, system. I, I have right? someone who just emailed me yesterday saying, that if you try to have it programmed in 6502 assembly language, which is the language that I actually learned yeah, on, yeah. that it will make up instructions and things like that. It's the yeah, same yeah, symptom, the same problem. Like there's nothing intrinsically more complicated about 6502 than Python. In fact, it's a lot simpler, but there's a lot of data on Python. There's not a lot of data yeah, on 6502 so it's, in modern it's form. Really it's really based on Python and, that, and, and JavaScript. And that has gotten me to go back to Python, for the, which I don't, I don't even like that much, but. But the LLMs are just so good at it. Because there's so much data. It's yeah. always, you know, in proportion so with data. I, I think, that, however, this sort of thinking that they're doing is something that our brains do. It's just not all, all of what our brains do. And I mean, I like the, the Kahneman system one, system two analogy. You know, the fast automatic reflexive stuff, system one, they kind of do pretty well. The more deliberative, abstractive, and so forth, the Kahneman calls system two, they don't do very well. The subtlety is though, they can do category theory using system one. Humans cannot do category I'm theory. I'm sure that you, you can find system. places where they break. I, I mean, I, I don't mean, do a lot of category one, theory. But... One guy, Mike Stay, he can do category theory using system one, right? But I've never met anyone else with that, with that particular capability, right? It, so they, because of the way they ingest data, mm. like they can ingest every category theory proof ever done. And so they can deal with this in like a statistical re reflexive way, whereas I'm people need to I'm think sure, really hard, right? I'm sure you could find places where they break. I mean, people break too. Oh, I'm not of, that fond, by the way, of the people break too thing. If, if we get well, this break in a there. different pattern. They do break in different yeah. patterns, but we don't want a calculator that breaks. And when we do certain high precision, high safety kinds of things, and I think alignment should be one of them, we really want systems that we can count on in the way that we can count on calculators. It's no, it would be no excuse for a calculator to say, ah, well, you know, I forget to carry the one, so I guess it's okay with my calculator. This, bring, this, this brings us to deeper points, because, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the same AI system that's doing cutting-edge research and is operating the, the weapons infrastructure, right? I mean, you, sure, sure. You, you just like you tend not to hire the same people for those. That's right. things either because different people have different characteristics, right? So, I mean, it could be fine that the system doing cutting edge research does make some, some weird, weird mistakes. See, it partly right? depends on its relation to the person too, yeah. and also how much autonomy we give it. So an AI system that makes a bunch of mistakes, but works closely with a person like for coding mm -hmm. and the person knows how to debug, that's fine. Well, in, 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 that, in that case, what you do, you couple the 
AI program generator with a debugger, right? <laughs> and it finds the mistakes and submits a new prompt and then you iterate. Yeah, I mean, you need really humans think. in the loop there. And I worry a lot about the security and maintainability of the code that's being written. The cognitive prerequisites that I've spent most of my career thinking about, uh -huh. I don't really see solved in the popular tradition. I understand you have some avenues towards them. Right. But in general, we don't have good solutions now to maintaining world models over time, yeah. for generalizing, um, for, uh, or for abstraction, uh, for distinguishing types and tokens, lots of basic stuff that in the LLM world is just not confronted. Yeah, I can yeah. see why a neurosymbolic approach might do better, but I think that no neurosymbolic approach has seen the level of kind of productionizing that we need, except in very narrow domains. So, so AlphaFold, for example, is a neurosymbolic system, yeah. but it's very narrowly constrained. We have, the world has not yet seen, although I know you're trying to work I mean, on so it. So was DeepMind's solution to StarCraft was neurosymbolic. And so yeah, and, but in the end, it wasn't that great, as my understanding. I don't know the final verdict on it. But it's good, it's good they, to play StarCraft. Yeah. Even there, I think there were some issues, but I, I'm not sure. But in general, they've been narrow engineered. Okay, yeah. so right, the best yeah. neurosymbolic yeah. systems have been narrow. No, no, we're not there yet. Um, so and so, so that's yeah. the gap to me. So what, what I've been spending the last two years on is building the first massively scalable substrate for symbolic AI. I, so I, 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 can, I can get, need to do. I can get a trillion logical nodes and links in, in RAM on, on one machine mm -hmm. and then efficiently run things on them on, on multiple cores with concurrency, right? And so now, so now we're just starting to experiment with cognitive architectures on this. So I can't personally vouch for the work because I haven't gone yeah, through yeah, it. Yeah, but to me, that sounds like an important step. But also that there is going to be multiple important steps. There's a lot like of research. How do you reason yeah. over um, partial information, for example? Mm -hmm. And you know the kinds of things you're doing are valuable towards that, yeah. but they're not answers to that. And my view is like there are dozens of things that need to be answered. Yeah. And usually answering a question actually takes a long time. But take transformers, right? We had them in 2017, but really doing something with them took, depending on how, how you want to count it, five or six or seven years. They still don't quite do the things we want. So to my mind, they're like hundreds of puzzles we haven't yeah. solved, and it would be miraculous or horrible, depending on the outcome, yeah. um, if, if all of, but improbable, shall we say, if we were to solve all of those in five so years. My, my thinking is a lot of us have actually solved a lot of these problems conceptually and tested them on small prototypes over the last few decades. Yeah, the, when we have a scalable system to try them out on, it's, things it, may come together quite nicely. I right? won't logically rule that out, Yeah, but I'll also say I've seen a lot of demos that you know took longer to, to be realized. It's certainly true, but we haven't seen this amount of resources going into the problem ever before either, right? Which true. is, is quite, quite That's different. That's part of why I hedge yeah. my bets. Yeah, yeah. And like, I think the chance that it's gonna come out of LLMs is zero. Yeah. But the chance that someone else could be used, could be someone else, has a different architecture that works is a little bit higher, like maybe. Like, I don't think there's enough societal support for looking at alternatives. You've got some, some money to do it. Um, but in, in general, like, we don't have the same amount of sort of person hours on these yeah, alternatives. Yeah, well, that, well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, the and so investors, it's hard. investors are herd animals for Investors for are herd animals. As well as for I think when, yeah. when AGI yeah. does arrive, Maybe it's 2029, maybe it's 2039, maybe it's 2049. When it arrives, people are going to look back at the early 2020s and say, why did they spend so much effort over here well, people are when the answer is over all there? all of human history and say, what the fuck are these people doing? And on that <laughs> note, somebody likes this complicated question. Do you allow the machine to make moral progress with human consultation without? Well, not, I mean, there's a whole bunch of hard questions. question there. because it will make moral progress. I mean, well, no, I, mean, that's not... can, I don't think we can stop it. I, well, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think that we could hard code things and, and make them fixed. I mean, there's all these questions well, about could, could the machine take someone else won't, I mean. And then there's yeah. a set of political questions. No, right? I, 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 I Who agree. controls the box. If, if, but, you, if you had a uh, sufficiently powerful global fascist dictatorship controlling AI development, you could perhaps constrain AGI in that Well, way. let us hope that that's not the but, uh, implementational I mean, strategy. With, with the current situation, it seems like there's going to be a lot of different AGIs popping up all, all over the place. Well, I think that that's once probably we true. Get there, and some some folks will constrain them in some ways; others will not constrain them in. in yeah, just in, like we in, have some people that right? are constrained by the laws and values of the land, 
and some that are not, right? And, and sometimes that's very good, which is how progress is made. And some more and often sometimes it's less good. good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. not going to run away from that. Yeah. yeah. From a profusion of values and machines doing different things, we have to think about how we're going to constrain them as best we can. We should think about what the good guys should be doing here. We should think about what the bad guys are going to be doing here. Actually, what what worries me most in terms of the ethics and social impact of AI may be a little bit different than most of what you worry about, which is because I'm an optimist that we're going to get to human level AGI in the next few years, and you're more pessimistic about that. Mm -hmm. So since, since I think we're probably going to get to human level AGI roughly on Kurzweil's timeline of 2029. And I don't maybe, really see that. Maybe but... even a couple of years before that. But since, since I do feel that way, what worries me is the gap between when we get to the first human level AGI and when it has spawned a super intelligence. And if, if that gap is, say, two years, five years, 10 years, like what happens in the world during that interval? Because you, you'll have a bunch of different AGIs many of them controlled by current national leaders who are maybe not the wisest people yeah. on, 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 on the planet, then you will have early stage AGIs eliminating many categories of, of human work, including in the, in the developing world. You don't world, need right? AGI to eliminate some human work, no. right? Well, I, I mean, LLMs, which I think we can agree is not yeah, AGI, yeah. are already eliminating uh, some uh, human work. Absolutely so. But then in, in, the, in Africa or Latin America, when middle class jobs are automated away and agricultural jobs are increasingly automated away by, you know, robot harvesters and, and so forth becoming cheap, like what actually happens? We're seeing a decreasing appetite for, for foreign assistance from the right. from the developed world. So that period between human level AGI and super intelligence could hold a lot of chaos. So I, and I, a lot of scrambling for power. I tend to be I'm both an optimist that we can get to human level AGI rapidly, and I'm, for largely non rational reasons, an optimist that super intelligence will be beneficial and, and compassionate. But the period in between is. Yeah, that's is an tough. optimism it's that tough, needs to be based right? in, a, in a plan, which we don't have. And we can't know either. Right? I think we could do more to prepare than we have. We can do more to prepare for human level AGI. And, and for how to make it have a good outcome. I think uh, that is great. It's a good conversation. And uh, always a pleasure, Ben. Yeah, we, I think we were really, really close together in perspective compared to the yeah, yeah. vast majority of, of uh, I think we are. AI, 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 people, AI people today. And it, it'll be quite interesting. And someday we will both be proven right. Right now, people yeah. have their own yeah, ideas yeah. about LMs, but for sure. But someday, I think but people things will like see. it's interesting with things like this Apple paper, people are somehow taken aback when I mean, they shouldn't be this surprised. Was like yeah. Insanely, insanely obvious from the get go. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's going to be a lot more things like that. Indeed. All right. Well, all right. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks.